Hello and welcome to Seed Prod. In the last video on YouTube, we did how to add particle effects in WordPress. And here's an example of what we created. So if you'd like to watch that video, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. In this video, we're gonna look at how to add your own custom particle effects in WordPress. So Seed Prod comes with some default ones and that's what we looked at in the last video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own particle effects that are fully customized by you. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Again, we're gonna be using Seed Prod. And in this video, I'm gonna be using the pro version. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below on how to install Seed Prod. You can head over to seedprod.com for more information as well. Great, so I'm going to continue off where we left off with the last video. You don't have to watch that if you already are familiar with this block and you just wanna learn about the custom particle effect. On the left-hand side, I have Seed Prod here and we're gonna to go to the landing pages. You can use this on the theme builder as well or any page that's created by Seed Prod. If I come down, we have the particle test page that we created. Let's go ahead and click on edit. So this is where we left off on the last video. So you can add a particle effect to any section. That's the purple part here. Let's go ahead and click on this one and we'll go under advanced. So this already has the particle effect added to it. We can look under the particle background section and you can see that it's enabled right here. So instead of using the built-in particle effect, we can click under style and right now it's set to space. Let's go ahead and click on custom. And there's actually a link here. If we click this, this will open in a new tab and this will take us to the particle JS website. Let me just increase this a bit so it's a little bit easier to see. Now the background is actually the effect that you're, you can see that you can customize. So this gives you a great preview of what it'll look like. So on the right hand side, we have our options. So on the drop down on the top right, we have default, there's NASA, we have bubble, we have snow, and the Nyan cat, which would be an interesting effect to add to your website. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna go with the bubble, and we can start from the top. So right here at the particles, let's go ahead and open this. And you can go through all of the different options here to fully customize how you want it to look, feel, react, the colors, the size, the speed, everything. So here's the number of the particles that you want to add. Keep in mind that increasing the number of particles can be harder on certain people's machines if they have a low end PC. So I think what I want to actually start with here is the size of them, just so I can add more. So I'm going to bring this down quite a bit and we'll do around here. You can actually randomize this and this will randomize the size between 16 and lower. So if I click this, you can see there's smaller ones that go up to 16. And I'm just going to minimize this and come back up to the number. Now I can increase the amount that I want. So I'll put this maybe at, let's go around 200. Here's a density enabled. And you have the density value area right here. Below that we have the color. So on the page that I was using, it actually looks good with maybe an, an orange color. So I'll switch this. Go ahead and I'll put something right around here. I think that'll look fine. Below that we have the shape. And you can actually add a stroke. This is the border around the object itself. So for example, if I add, let's do five and then change the color. Let's do something that's a little bit more related to the orange. There we go. You can see how it adds a five pixel border around those objects. Below that we have the polygon. So this is the actual, how many sides are on the polygon. So if you have, for example, three, you have a triangle, four would be a square. And as you increase, the rounder the object will get. I think six is fine for this example. Below that we have the image. I'm not going to be using an image, but you can include one here, the image width, the height, and below that we have the type. So right now we're using polygon. You can change that to something else if you like. So here's a star, there's an edge, circle, etc. So let's go back, I'm gonna use the polygon. Great, let's minimize the shape. We'll come down to the size. And this is what we already modified, but there is an animation section here. If you increase this, you can see the options for this. And this will control the animation for when the object grows or shrinks. So some of them are actually getting smaller or bigger as they move around. Here we have the animation speed. You can make that go a little faster or slower. We have the animation sync. So you can sync this animation if you like. So they all go at once at the same time instead of individually. And of course we have the value here for the size. Let's go ahead below that. We have the opacity. So this is how bright they are on the page, how much you can see through them. So higher opacity means you can see the color better and lower means less. We do have this randomized, so if you took this off, they'd all be a static opacity. So here you can see that they're all a solid color. I'll randomize this, and we can minimize the opacity. Here we have the line linked, and this will actually add the lines in between them. You've probably seen this quite a bit. So there you go, you can see this as quite a few. There's the distance, so this will add more lines or fewer, depending on how far away they are. For the color, you can change that to something else. I'm gonna just go again with the orange colors and then the opacity, so you can add or change that if you like, and the width of the line, so you can make it extremely thick or, or lower. All right, I'm gonna minimize this, and we can come to the move, so this is more to do with the speed and how they move on the page. So if I uncheck this, obviously they will stop, it'll just be a static image. 
And if we turn it back on, it'll move. We have the direction right now. They're just randomized. You can change this to top or right, bottom, left, etc. I'll leave this on none. And we'll change this to random. So they'll go all in random directions. You can change this to straight as well. And here we have the speed. So right now it's actually going pretty quick. I'm going to put this down a little bit. I like personally slower moving objects. Down here we have the out mode. So this means that they're going to go off the page. But you can actually change this to a bounce. So when they hit the edge of the page, they'll actually bounce and come back in. Here we have a attract enable. And you can change the attract rotate X or on the Y. For this example, I'm just going to leave this off. Let's minimize the move. And we have the interactivity. We have on hover. So this is when you hover over. You can have it grab, bubble, or repulse. Here for on click, we can have it push, remove, bubble, or repulse. And down here we have different modes. So how those will react for the grab, bubble, repulse, push, and remove. Below that we have the detect on for canvas or the window. I'm going to leave it to canvas. And you have a page background here. Right now it has the blue. I'm just going to leave this. This is just for the example. We can actually hide that card if you want to get a full effect here. Let's minimize the page effect. We have the retina detect. I'm going to leave that on. And right here is the last step. We're going to download the current config. So here we go. It's going to download this to my hard drive. And if I click and open this, I'm going to open this in Notepad. And here you can see the JSON file with what we need. So I'm actually going to remove this one line here. This is for the image since I'm not using an image. And I'm going to take this out plus that one last comma because the last item doesn't use a comma after it. If you're going to remove or add anything, be careful of your spacing with the commas and the brackets. I'm going to select all of this with Control A. And I'm going to hit Control X to select and cut all of that. Great. Now I'm going to come back to the particle background options for the custom. And right here, we have a little text field that we can paste all of this in. And you can see that that effect is added into our page. Now I'm just going to go ahead and save the page. And we can preview that. And there you go. You can see our custom particle effect was added to the background. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. It means a lot. Please subscribe to the channel and check out these videos if you'd like to learn more about SeedProd. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.